recruit medical directors, assistant medical directors, EMS directors, pediatric emergency medicine directors is, is this the right job for you? Yes, the job needs to be done, but is this the right job for you? If not, then it's time to, to move on. One of the problems we have is what we call the problem of the apostrophe. As clinicians, when we always talk about our patient apostrophe S needs, and that's an important concept. We all believe that. One of the most holy things that we say is, this is my patient. But when you move, as all of you in the room have, to the role of being a leader, the apostrophe moves. And now you're concerned about all of the patients, not just the one in front of you, which is still as holy as ever. But the fact is, you've got to be responsible for saying, how are we going to take care of this group of people that are there in order to do it in the, in the best way possible? I had the privilege of working with Thad Allen when I was... Uh, in the uh, Katrina, I wasn't there for Katrina, but immediately afterwards, two days later, was down uh, at the request of the governor of Virginia. And I, I, I love the, his statement that all we're looking for is dogs that hunt. Those of you who are not from the South, there's an old saying, that dog won't hunt. It just won't hunt. And so the question is, what are the attributes of a medical director, medical leadership that hunt, that make things uh, work? So let's chat a little bit about that. First of all, I think part of the problem is that healthcare in general, but emergency departments in, in particular, look like to the patient a whole bunch of silos. We always talk about functional silos. And my question is, if your emergency department is an emergency department where a doc says, well, that's not a doc problem, that's a nurse problem. The nurse says, that's not a nurse problem, that's a doc problem. The doc and the nurse say, that's not our problem, that's radiology's problem, or that's lab's problem. Ladies and gentlemen, that's, if it's a problem for the patient, it's a problem for all of us. And so what we have to do is be able to connect across these silos, if you will, which is effectively what we do in terms of leading teams, so that from the perspective of the patient, it looks like an emergency department, not an ER for the nurses, an ER for the docs, the lab, radiology, and that stuff. This is a Kirk slide, but it really it very well illustrates from the patient's perspective, rule number one, what does the emergency department look like for someone who comes in ambulatory? Well, you come in, you get triage, you wait. You get registered, you wait. The nurse calls you up, you get put in a room, you wait. The doc or the uh, PA or NP uh, comes in, you wait. There's tests and treatments that occur, and all of this you're used to. But I'm just saying as you look at it from the perspective of the patient, it's a wonder that they don't get up and leave thinking, don't you people even talk to each other? Because sometimes it feels that way in our emergency departments. And to the effect that the emergency department works well is the ability to connect across those silos to help people understand that, yes, we do essentially fill those interstices, if you will, between those processes with what we call A-team behaviors. We'll talk later about A-team members and B-team members, but essentially A-team behaviors or A-team processes are ways of trying to manage across those silos so that to the patient, to the family, to the community, it truly looks like we're all working together and effectively.